Hello, welcome back to the channel. For anyone new here, my name's John. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Lake District, UK. And in today's video, I'm gonna get out of the office, finally, on a local walk, and share some tips to improve your pet photography, especially if you've got a dog. So we've got our model, June, who's gonna uh, be taking center stage today. Gonna to get some shots of her and share some tips on how you can get better images of your dogs when you're out on your local walks. So let's get going. So we're going up to Berkrig Common today for the uh, four shoot of June and uh, to share these tips. It's a local walk for myself in Alderston. Today's coffee of choice is from uh, Fellside Roast, which is a local brewer of coffee in Alderston. I'll leave a link to their Instagram below. Bloody good coffee. Can't wait to get another order in. So although most of these tips are aimed at people who have a DSLR or mirrorless camera, you can still take some of these examples and some of these tips that I'm going to share with you and use them with your phone photography as well. So don't just think, oh, because you don't have a nice fancy camera, you can't use any of these tips. You can, and I'm gonna show you along the way how you can incorporate it into your phone photography as well. So the first tip is to always bring a toy for your dog to play with. So whether that be a ball, a frisbee, anything that they can chase after and bring back to you. It's no good if you don't have anything. It can be a bit tricky to get them to run a distance away from you and then run back to you. The whole point is to capture them enjoying the day. So today with June, we've got her favorite frisbee. We're gonna be chucking that around for her, which she loves chasing after and bringing back. And we're gonna get some shots of her messing about with this frisbee because if anyone who knows June, she likes to bring it back in a very unusual way. So I'm hoping to get some images of her doing that today. And okay, hopefully I can share them shots with you. So my second tip is aimed at kits. So if you do have a phone and that's it, that's not a problem, use that. But if you do have a DSLR or mirrorless camera, and if you have a telephoto lens like I have with a 70 to 200, use that. It's a great bit of kit. You can zoom in and out between that focal range of 70 to 200, and you get a, a wide variety of shots. If you only have a prime lens, for example, the 50 mil, you can still do these types of shots. You just have to move around a little bit more. You're not gonna be able to stay in one position punch into the image, punch out the image. You're gonna to have to move them legs a little bit. So my third tip is to get low to the ground. So you've thrown your frisbee, you've thrown the ball for the dog to go get. As it's coming back, get low to the ground. You don't have to go stupidly low, but standing up fully and taking it from just a normal height doesn't look as great as when you get nice and low to the ground and get that shot of them running back to you. It looks so much better the lower you are to the ground. So the next tip is all about settings, especially if you've got a mirrorless or DSLR camera. You wanna make sure first off that your shutter speed's quick enough so that the dog that you're photographing is gonna be in focus and not blurry. The second thing is F number. You wanna make sure that your F stop isn't too low so then it's just an eye in focus or the nose in focus. It can make it really tricky when you go really low on the F number to get the shot just right. So what I like to do is on my 70 to 200, even though that telephoto lens can go down to 2.8, I like to bump it up to kind of three and a half, four, and then I make sure that the full face is in focus and there's no blurry parts of it. And finally, ISO, you wanna make sure it's not too bright so that your images aren't too grainy and you don't want it to be too low either. And then it gives you more chance of your missing focus of your shot. Two seconds, June wants a frisbee throwing. So the next tip is for anyone who's got a bit of a smart ass of a dog like myself. So I don't know about anyone else, but when I throw the ball or frisbee for June, after a while, she figures out that I'm taking a picture. She starts veering off away from me. She's a bit camera shy. So the best thing to do is to catch them off guard. So when you've been th uh, throwing the toy around for a while and having a rest, the lying down, taking a seat, or in June's case right now, rolling around, you can get some unique images then. And then, because there's more stationary, more chilled out, adjust your settings accordingly, change your shutter speed, because you won't need it to be as fast. So if you follow them tips that I've gone through today, you'll not only get some great shots of your dog, you'll have fun doing it, and you'll get end up with some great images that you can either share on social media or print out, like I, I've done with June, we printed out some of her images, and it's great memories, and something that you can look back on. Not only that, pets, dogs especially, are a great way to practice your photography. So if you've got a new bit of kit, new camera body, new lens, 
It's a great way to practice using your new bit of kit, get used to it and refine your skills. And if after watching this video I have any other questions on pet photography or photography in general, let me know in the comments or send me a DM on Instagram at jwmarsphoto and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button, that'd be great. Let me know in the comments below which tip you thought was the most useful and which one that you'll use moving forward. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell and share the video. That would be absolutely amazing. See you in the next one. Thank you.